I want to start with this question. If you had to describe a data center to a 10 year old, how would you describe it? This is where, you know, the computer systems and servers that power our modern world live. Anything you do related to the internet is gonna flow through a data center. Are you swiping your credit card at the grocery store? That's going through a data center. Are you using an app on your phone? It's going through a data center. Yeah, you got really smart kids. Because when I try to do that, they're like, connectivity, you like, <laughs> I would lose them completely. <laughs> it's the place where the ideas of the whole world live. Everything on your phone and some of the things not on your phone live in a data center in that uh, it blows people's mind. What are the components that go into building a data center? Let's start with power. Okay. okay. What's going to power these servers that are inside our data center, right? How reliable is it? Is it efficient designs? And is it safe? There's a couple of types of cooling. There's the traditional evaporative cooling where you're essentially throwing a lot of water at hot materials and machinery and it's evaporating off. That's evaporative cooling. We've come up with a standardized building design. It uses a, a closed loop pumped refrigerant, kind of like your home AC. It's pumping it through a closed pipe system to cool down the building. When I think of a data center, I always think that it needs three pieces. It has to be always on. So it has to have reliable, safe, affordable power. It has to be always connected. Otherwise, it's just a shed. And it has to be secure, physically and logically secure. People do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. There's so much good that data centers could do. Being as environmentally sound as we can, right? We're adding resiliency, partnering with local colleges and universities. It's additive. You don't do that if you don't care and intentionally make it a priority, which QTS does. Can you talk a little bit about what some of that economic benefit looks like? There's direct jobs in the asset, in the building. There's also a lot of indirect jobs. People servicing the gear, people working for mechanical, electrical contractors. The difference is QTS is real. A significant portion of the world, including the United States, isn't even connected to the internet or broadband. And how do you raise yourself up out of poverty or change your situation if you're not connected to the economy? It's very difficult to do. Come over here. That's really nice. So while we were recording, William was drawing. He was listening to live feed and taking your answers and responses from scratch. Creating this wow. based upon everything that you all said. We're about human flourishing, not technology, although we use technology. But how do we help people thrive?